Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video I'd like to walk you through the entirety of the Unity Editor interface. So whenever you start or load a new project, you're going to have a hierarchy over here on the left, which will be composed of a scene and any game objects which you add to that scene below it. Now a game object can include anything from a canvas where you draw the UI onto, it could include empty game objects, which are really nothing more than scripts, though they may still include a rect transform, giving it a technical position within the game world, though everything it does is actually uh, just code in the background. And it may be um, something like one of these characters we see down here, which you would expect to actually see in the game, like a sprite, a enemy, or possibly even a background map or a background image. Now note that you can have multiple scenes added to your game hierarchy over here on the left. And it's actually important um, because if you are trying to reference a scene that is not over here on the list of scenes and you try to transition, let's say, from level select to the main title, it's going to error out. So you'll probably need to have your scenes over here not loaded, the ones that you are actually going to use in your game. Um, but when it comes to building the project out, you can add more scenes than are actually included right there. So let's actually go to build settings real quick. And we'll see that we can add open scenes right here. So that would be the quickest way to just make these scenes into the game. But that doesn't mean you couldn't add one and then add it to the build and remove it later on. Another one of the windows you're going to be focusing on a lot is the project tab, which is normally down here in the bottom left. And this contains uh, basically the entire project, all of your assets, uh, which will include things like sound effects, music, images, scripts, scripts being a really big one to make all the game functionality work. And you store them in basically however you want to organize them down here. Uh, so that you can use and reference them within the game project. Now, one really cool thing about Unity is that whenever you move your items around, uh, Unity has the magic in the background of knowing where you moved it to. So if I was to say move this Emperor script into the scripts directory, the game will still work. It'll still know where to find that Emperor script as long as it's an asset. Now also, whenever you import things from the Unity asset store, they're going to import uh, somewhere in your assets directory. Usually it's in its own directory, like Cartoon UI Pack, which uh, gave me some of these button images you see over here. That was added to its own directory. Of course, there's nothing to prevent me from moving that somewhere else I wanted, like into my 2D art directory. So that's all well good. Now the asset store will be uh, by default over here next to scene and game. Let's talk about the asset store and then we'll go back to scene and game. So the asset store, uh, allows you to grab free and paid items, which can include anything from scripts, uh, sound effects, music, uh, the same kind of things you would include in your assets are going to be in the asset store, logically. Um, so there can be a lot of useful stuff you can import from this and add it to your game. For instance, the zombie spec over here. Um, if you were making a zombie game, that might be something you'd want to reference so that you can speed up your development time by using materials that are already out there. Okay, now let's go back to the scene. Um, we've been looking at it. It's definitely the most visual component because the scene is where you place everything onto your, um, well, onto your screen, onto your scene, what is actually going to show in game. Now, you'll notice right here, this is the UI we're looking at. So this is a UI image in the background, UI buttons, UI sliders, and all of that. And that's fine. That the UI, normally that's how you build your interface, well, user interface, by definition, that's what it is. Those would be the buttons that are on screen, but not necessarily the in-game objects. Um, now, of course, I'm using it a little differently here, because in this particular scene, everything is a UI element. Um, but down here, you can actually see where the camera is and what the camera is showing. So the UI, uh, the, the canvas over here, It'll basically place itself within the bounds of this camera, so the fact that the camera is way smaller than the UI actually isn't a problem. It would be if we were talking about game objects outside of the UI, but not for the UI itself. That's just a little bit of a quirk there with Unity. 
So for any of the objects you've added to your scene, whenever you click on one, you'll notice over here on the right by default the Inspector tab, one of the most important tabs inside of Unity. What the Inspector does is it allows you to set values, add in scripts, and uh, similar actions for each of the game objects on your scene. For instance, if you want to take a game object and give it a tag for whatever reason, maybe you want to have a script that only affects game objects with the tag of enemy, you could drag, go down there, same kind of thing with the layer, and you also have access to other things. Depending on your game object, you may see different things, like uh, regular game objects would just have a transform rather than a rect transform, so a little bit of a difference there, you'd be able to set the position in the game world here, so x value, y value, z value, that kind of thing, and uh, with the scripts that are added to it, and then with each of the components that are added to your object, it'll have certain functionality that you can configure by setting all of these fields, which are going to be things like Boolean values, uh, variables, integers, floats, um, and things from a drop-down menu, uh, which are basically going to be different selections. That also applies to your own scripts. So, for instance, if I was to go over here to the game control object, I have a script called game control and that with uh, basically having public variables exposes a lot of different things that I can set up for my scene. For instance, uh, the max health of the player, the current health of the player, the level of the player, uh, how many experience points they have, and such things. Also, for objects that have scripts with events, you'll see something similar to this where it'll specify an event like on click and you can drop in game objects over here and call a specific um, function from one of those game objects. Now uh, the next tab over here from scene is game. This is where you would actually have things playing out from your scene basically testing the game before you publish it. So if we go to game and we hit play it's actually going to play in the same way it would in the actual game. So here it's going to play, and you can hear music. We can click on the different buttons, which will load up different scenes like my combat scene. So essentially, the game tab is used for testing out your game, which you will need to do a lot as you're configuring everything and doing some of the coding necessary for your game to function. Uh, one thing I will point out, maximize on play. If you don't want it to play in this tiny little interface and you maybe want it to be full screen, maximize on play. If you check that and hit play, uh, that'll get you going with a much larger area to play your game in. Now, whenever you select an object in your game scene, you can animate a lot of objects, specifically um, objects that do have an animator attached to it. So, for instance, I have a screen fader over here. Uh, animator is attached, and that animator is controlled by the screen fader animation controller. If you go to the animator tab with one of those objects, you can set up different things like uh, the states of animation. Um, where for instance, if it transitions from any state into battle victory, it'll play some kind of fade sequence. And how it gets there is by um, detecting that the battle victory condition has been set and then immediately moving from any state into that battle victory state. Uh, now I'm not going to go too much into that, but that's part of animation in Unity. Uh, the other aspect would be when you select an object and you can go up to window and then animation or hit control 6 on your keyboard. And this is where you can actually set up the animations themselves. So for instance, the screen fader fade in animation, it goes from a color alpha of 1 all the way down to zero and then it plays animation complete as an animation event uh, basically just uh, kinda like a callback sends back to the script and lets it know to wrap things up um, directly from within that animation. Uh, one more tab that I do have disabled currently is services you'll notice this by default over by the inspector and what services allows you to do is to add some things into your game like ads uh, if you are paying for premium Unity um, analytics, I believe you need premium for that, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, cloud build and collaborate for working with teams and having your game build out in the cloud. Uh, those are free services, so they're uh, pretty handy. No reason not to use it. Uh, it you would probably want collaborate if you are going to be working with anyone else so that you can sync all of your files together, for instance. And you got some other stuff going on there, so probably want to check that out if you're just getting into Unity.
Now, as for actually editing your scripts, you don't do that directly within Unity. Um, if I go find a script here, like let's just open up this Emperor script. It's actually got nothing in it, but you'll see it starts up Visual Studio, which I already have here in the background. Um, Visual Studio, it's a pretty mainstream IDE for doing things like C-sharp coding, which Unity does run on C-sharp and JavaScript. And if you want to create scripts so that your characters actually do things, you're probably going to be using that. Um, I believe Unity also comes with Mono Develop as its internal IDE, but you can use either Visual Studio or Mono Develop. Kind of up to you. And you would just, well, basically go in and program things. And it's really hard to get into how all that works because programming is a whole other nutshell. Um, but yeah, that's what you would be doing if you want to edit a script. You just double click it and you start going ahead and coding it. Now, I'm not going to cover it in too much detail right here, but over on the top left, you may have noticed that there's some buttons uh, that are options there for controlling your game objects. For instance, if you select this one that looks like up, down, left, and right arrows, you can move the position of your game objects, select them in the hierarchy, move them around, and you effectively change its position. However, uh, you don't have to use those tools. You can get the same things achieved just by typing in the values in the inspector, which will give you more precision. But yeah, these tools over here on the left, like move, rotate, and scale respectively, uh, will give you a bit of an advantage in getting things roughly how you want them. And then maybe later on, you can go into the inspector and manually edit them. Uh, but that's just about it from the main things you're going to be using from the Unity Editor interface. Obviously, there's more stuff I didn't cover, but I hope this gives you a really good overview of everything. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon down below, and I'll see you in my future content.